All right, in this video, I am going to show you how to make a basic 3D shape and how to control the parameters of that shape. So things like the size, the shape, the color, the rotation, and the position. And we have all of these attribute inspectors right here, which control all of these attributes for us. So if we click sphere here, we can change to one of many different shapes. And you'll see that sometimes they overtake, and that's because maybe they're a little bit too big. So what we need to do is we need to have a way here of controlling our parameters that's a little bit easier than maybe typing in these numbers, which I can do, right? Maybe I want to turn this, this 45 degrees, okay? Or maybe I want to move it um, over to the left or to the right. And this is helpful to know what these numbers are, so play around with them here. But it also might be more helpful for us to have some interface objects, like maybe a slider or a dial, to control this. And then we're also going to add in some parameters uh, for, for uh, some function for automatically animating these parameters. So the first thing I want to do is make a slider for my scale. So here's a slider. I'm going to drag it into vertical mode so it fits here. Where are my handles? Hello. There we are. Drag it uh, away from vertical mode into horizontal mode and pull out my inspector and just change it so that my range goes from 0 to 2. Make sure you click float output. And that's just because I've experimented with this enough that I know that there's a size 0 scale uh, cube, and as I get up to 2, it's about as big as I would want it to be for this phrase, okay? And then for my position, I'm not going to mess too much with position for today. You could do a slider for this if you wanted. I'm just going to um, make myself a reset button to reset to the center, and all I have to do is put a size uh, number 0 in here, and when I click this zero, it will reset everything to the center. So in case you lose your shape, this is really helpful. For rotation, I'm going to make dials. And dials are already 360. Uh, the unit is 360 for degrees. So just check that. We roll this up. Oh, I lied. It's not. By default, it's 127. I guess I had changed mine earlier. So I'm going to go into my inspector and change this here so that my number of steps is 359 and see if that works. There we go, 358, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't wanna do a software update. Thank you. I am going to change this to 360. So starting from zero to 369, there we go. All right, so I'll make three of these and this is for rotation along each axis, x axis, this way, y axis, this way, and z axis, I always mess this one up, this way, this way, <laughs> yes, okay, this way, this way, left and right, forward and back, uh, left and right, and uh, like a steering wheel is the other one. It takes a while to get used to thinking in 3D. And uh, we're going to put this in a POC object, and we're going to do integers, three integers, so that each of these can control one of those dimensions. OK, so let's just see here. Well, let's maybe get a sphere, make it a little bigger and smaller. That's much easier. I can now rotate it, excellent, along this way. And so there's my steering wheel. And there's my rolling z-axis. OK, let's just set those to 0. Excellent. Oh, and I forgot color. I forgot color. So let's add that in here. I right click to get another attribute inspector, and this is GL color. And I can click here, and it's going to bring up this panel. So I can choose this. I can also directly embed this into my code using a swatch object. So I like to do that. Go ahead and just do that, and then I can control that color. Okay, so 
Make sure that you have this checkbox on, by the way, or it won't update any of your changes. And now that we have all these parameters easy to understand and control, let's add in some basic animation. So I'm gonna do the color first, and I want to count, uh, let's say I just want the colors to, the hues to change. Okay, so I need a way of controlling just the hue, meaning in this swatch object, is it red, is it blue, is it, is it green, is it yellow? And we can do that using this swatch object. I'm going to send my swatch object a message via POC that is HSL. This is changing the color mode from RGB, which is default, to HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lightness. And I'm going to put my hue um, as a floating point is what that wants. I'll put my saturation at one and let's put my lightness or value of brightness at half. Put that in here. Now just check this. I should, oops, I'm so sorry. We need a floating point for this because I'm pretty sure that swatch wants zero to one. Yes, it does. Okay, so as we scroll from zero to one here, our hue is changing. Okay, so I can do this manually, but what I really want is something to do it for me. So I'm gonna say counter. We're gonna count from zero to 100, and we're gonna divide by 100 so that we can get a value that goes from zero to one in floating point. And whoops, M for his message. We want N from object and then Metro. And let's just have this happen 10 times a second. Grab ourselves a toggle and watch our colors fade. I like it. The next thing we might wanna do is to automate the rotation. I'm gonna use the same process. So just gonna copy this and just change the things that we need to change. So instead of HSL, we're looking at the rotation in X, Y, or Z, and that range is from zero to 360, so we can use integers for this. So I'm gonna say uh, integer, and then we'll just keep our other rotations right at zero for now. Switch this uh, inlet, excuse me, that's what I want, right here. And then this is rotation, so we're gonna hook this up. Oh, I already have this. I already have this coded. Don't need this puck. I'm gonna take this and put this into the X axis rotation. And instead of zero to 100, we're gonna do zero to 359. Don't need the division in here. And let's turn that on. And now we have a slowly rotating, slowly hue changing sphere. I can change this to a different shape if I wanted. That's a nice, okay. So we can add more of these. You can use this counter to control any of these parameters. You can also try a random, I'm sorry, a random, and, or maybe, <laughs> or maybe uh, the other random object I like which is semi-socastic is the drunk object. And maybe we'll just put this in real quick and show you what this looks like for color. So instead of the counter cut out, we are going to do a drunk object. So instead of always going from zero to one now, woof, too fast. We're gonna slowly modify our color little bit by little bit. Now it's too slow. This is the step size that I'm adjusting here. There we go. And I'm changing the hue. It's not as nice as the counter. So play around with this and see what kinds of shapes you can animate. Oh, maybe one more thing. Let's say that you're, uh, you like this. You can make another one. Just copy all the things and the 
increase the sphere, make it bigger, make sure that you turn on your lighting enable so it actually looks like a sphere, and then you can have two different shapes. Let's just make it so we can actually see. There's our torus. Okay, so we can have two. Make another GL grid shape. You can have multiple shapes in here. See what you can make.